Okay, we'll go ahead and continue our post-race media availabilities. We're now joined by our race winner, driver of the number 20, Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota, Christopher Bell. We'll go ahead and open it up to questions. We'll go ahead and start with uh, Zach this time. Zach Sterniolo, NASCAR.com. Congratulations, Christopher. Um, to get this win here today, wh what does it say about the resiliency of you, this 20 team, um, with as far off as the balance was early? Um, obviously, a close loss last week. You lose the lead off pit road there late, but you still come through to get the win. What does it say about the resiliency of this 20 team? It says a lot, that's for sure. Um, wow. I mean, today was just a, a whirlwind for sure to be able to, well, not to be, to be able to overcome and, and to be in that bad of a spot. I mean, that was probably, what, a quarter straight away from going a lap down. Uh, it was just incredible the difference a couple pitch stop adjustments will, will do to your car. And, you know, I've always been one that uh, says that the car is everything. You know, the, the driver's job is to maximize the car. And if the car's fast, you do good. If the car's slow, you do bad. And uh, I think today was the epitome of that. Uh, my car was, we, we were really struggling, and I was the slowest car on the track at one point in the race, and then uh, a couple good adjustments later, and we became one of the fastest ones. Okay, we'll go over here to uh, Jordan, and then we'll come up here to Holly in the back. Oh, go over here too. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic, to your right. Uh, you're 22nd after stage two. Like, I mean, frustrations are high. So are you thinking at that point, just what, what are you thinking at that point? Or you're not thinking win, right? No, heck no. I, I mean, I can't even say I was thinking of a win any point in the day except uh, the last maybe 10 laps. Um, but it was just uh, insane, the difference that the car was. So even from stage one to stage two, you know, it's, it's no secret that this is not my favorite racetrack in the world. Uh, and I've had my fair share of struggles here. But stage one we took off and, and I was able to advance and move forward. And I started in the teens and I was able to drive into the top 10 to get stage points. Um, and there were a couple other guys that were coming back to me and I'm like, okay, I, I feel really good. And, and I, I was, I felt like we were a small adjustment away from being really competitive. Um, and then geez, it, it, it just uh, completely fell apart in the second stage. I took off and, and the balance was not good at all. And uh, the long run was terrible. I completely died on the long run and, and almost went a lap down. And um, I, I'm sure everybody on, on the 20 team was extremely frustrated and uh, were ready to throw the towel in. And then, uh, you know, a couple good adjustments and, and a big, big break with the yellow flag for sure. You know, if that yellow flag doesn't happen, then uh, I, I don't, I certainly don't win and I probably don't even sniff the top 10. So uh, we did catch a huge break in the third stage. Uh, I don't care. One quiet. Your crew chief tells you to kind of, I forget exactly what he said, but your response is like, I guess I need to fight harder. Like when your crew chief says something like that to you and to elicit a response like that from you, what, what are you thinking internally? Yeah, I mean, that was just me uh, boiling over with frustration. And, and I try to not do that. You know, I try to keep my temper um, as, as controlled as I could. But in that moment, I, uh, I did smart off to him and I apologized to Adam for that. But uh, his old drivers probably gave him a lot worse, so <laughs> I shouldn't feel too bad. <laughs> I have three, three wins in the last basically must-win situations, right? If you go back to last year, and so what is it? What is it about you in these situations where you're able to thrive? Uh, well, I mean, I don't think that it means anything for me. Um, I, I certainly thrive on pressure, and I love it, and I live for those type of moments. Um, and that's why I, last week hurt so bad because I, I live for those moments. Whenever you have an opportunity to make a, to, to be great, and uh, I, I, it didn't work last week, and that was that really really hurt me. But uh, you know, I, I think it, it's more so a credit to the team. You know, my uh, to, to come into the Charlotte Road Course, and I know I've said this a million times, but to go into Charlotte Road Course in a must-win situation, whenever we sucked on road courses all year and then to have the car capability that we had. Same thing at Martinsville. And, and now, um, you know, the round of eight, basically every race is a must win in the round of eight with our point situation. Uh, so we, Vegas was amazing, certainly had a car capable of winning. And then, uh, you know, a, a huge, huge turn of events from stage two to stage three 
uh, this this week to get her a car to where I, I could you know maintain my track position and uh, and win the race. Okay, come on up front to Holly. Hi, Holly Kane with the NASCAR Wire Service. That was kind of along the lines of my question, but do you consider yourself this clutch guy? I mean, do you look forward to having that opportunity to bring it on like that? And are you kind of like that, generally speaking, in life? Have you been like that before? Well, I don't want to be put in those positions. It's not like I sit here and try to be put in, you know, in a, in a pinch. It was very nice in the round of... 12 this year to have a good Texas and then just be able to survive, right? Once I uh, got that good finish at Texas, Talladega was just okay, just collect our points. And then Charlotte Road Course, same thing, collect our points. Uh, that certainly is a lot easier, but um, they're not always like that. And and we've had, uh, we've been really blessed and, and fortunate to, you know, be able to execute in these positions. And I'm just proud of, of the effort from everybody around me because it's, uh, it, you know, I'm just a small piece of, of what the success is. Do you start to welcome it now that you've proven that you can excel in No, I, I would rather I would I would rather I would rather be the regular season championship and be able to cruise in on points. But uh, and, and at Phoenix, I would I would rather have a five second lead and 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 just cruise. You know, I don't want to have to be put in those positions. But I do I do live for those moments. I, I love the. Um, I love being great and uh, or trying to be great, I should say, and and I, yeah, I, I'm, I love it. All right, let's go ahead and go to the back, and then we'll come over here. Trenton with uh, We have a uh, legend retiring this season, and Kevin Harvick, who earned the nickname the closer, the closer, and everything. You, you in these high pressure situations, sort of locking it up when you need to. Do you feel like you're carrying on that legacy in your own way? Uh, as you continue your your career as a young driver, um, I don't know. I mean, it, it you know Harvick is obviously one of the greatest to ever do it. So I, I am a far stretch from that, but uh, I, I am proud of what I've been able to accomplish. I guess is the right way to say it. But you know, I, I don't think that anybody will be the closer. You know, that's Kevin's motto. That's what he did, and uh, hopefully, I'm Christopher Bell. Okay, can we? Over here now. Hey, Christopher Kenneth Bueno, Kaplan News at FIU. First of all, congratulations on the win from Homestead to lock yourself into the championship four. You're now returning to that very round that you were last year, where unfortunately you fell short. How mentally do you change this approach to the second championship four as opposed to this first one? What did you learn from that first championship four experience that could help you at Phoenix in a couple weeks? Yeah, I mean, you're always more prepared whenever you get into situations for the second time. and. Um, so I feel like we're going to be better than what we were last, last year. And, and that was a bad race for us. You know, we were in the final four, but we just did not have the pace, uh, that we needed to, to compete for, for that event. And then Phoenix won this year, we improved dramatically on it. And I would say Phoenix won this year was our best Phoenix race in the next gen era. So, uh, I, I have way more confidence going into Phoenix this year than I did last year. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's one race, and, and we just have to go out there and execute. All right, let's come up front to Lee, and then over to Dustin. I'm kind of curious about you being able to get these clutch wins. I mean, it's like, you know, last year it was just like, ma not magical, because it was clearly talent, but what is it about you that you can just kind of step up when it's necessary to do what, what you need to do? Uh, I mean, I, I don't think that it's anything that there's no, there is no magic in it. it it's, um, fortunately, I, I f fortunately or unfortunately, I've been put in a lot of these positions growing up. And I think it's just a credit to me, uh, driving professionally for as long as I have. And, and, you know, you're, you, you improve on things every time you, you get into that position. So, you know, it, it, my first walk-off win was Charlotte, what, Charlotte Road Course, and that was certainly not the first high-pressure event that I'd been in in my career. So uh, you learn from it and you get better every time, and, and I just credit it to you know, my, my racing background and uh, being a professional racer long before I entered into the NASCAR series. What does he tell them about Ben coming back? Uh, I mean, he's proven that he has the same mentality, the same will, the same capability. 
uh, and, and I'm very fortunate to drive for him. You know, he's a two-time champion for a reason, so he's had plenty of his moments where he didn't fold under the pressure. All right, let's go over here to Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. I had a couple questions, but I want to check back on something you just said. Uh, and you talk about uh, you felt like Phoenix in the spring was the best race in the next gen era. Do you mean just at that track, or do you mean in the next gen in the two years that was the best race? Even though you well, the best race for me, my group. Um, the Phoenix one last year was terrible for me. I was really slow, and then Phoenix two wasn't much better. So, uh, <clears throat> frankly, we weren't competitive at Phoenix last year uh, as the twenty car, and then Phoenix one, twenty twenty three. I felt really competitive. I, I don't even remember what happened in that race, but I remember uh, it was a, it was a good showing for us. So I feel much more confident going into Phoenix two now than I did last year. And, and you talked about the disappointment last week, and obviously I know what you, the thing you know talked about feeling. Like, hey, maybe was this the golden ticket uh, last week uh, at, at Vegas? Look, I know you, you've done this a long time, so you understand the the highs and lows. But I'm curious. How long did it take to kind of turn the page from that? Because I, I get the sense, even when you talked to us earlier in the week, that there was still that element there that I don't think you know, we hear drivers say, hey, come Monday, I turn it off. I guess I'd question, I'm not sure if you were able to turn it off by Monday yet. Yeah, I mean, not not really. You know, you're all, I always uh, am thinking of, you know, what I, or thinking of races in, in the past. And, and I don't have a light switch, right? Like, I'm not going to just light switch off and on to the next week so um but fortunately whenever i get in the moment and i get in the in the car for practice or qualifying that i think that's whenever i'm like you know focusing on the task at hand and you know we had a couple simulator sessions this week so uh it, it's not a light switch but certainly by the time you get to the racetrack it, it's it's focusing on the, the task that's in front of you and also uh, joe talked earlier before you came in is in, in going to phoenix having the opportunity to win the championship, but also talked about certainly last year and, and basically said there are, there are going to be memories. And I am not even going to suggest that a championship replaces the loss of someone's family member. But the idea that you will be able to go back to Phoenix, potentially maybe lift the spirits in some way, what, what does that mean considering all that happened last year? Yeah, last that year family? was just a, a whirlwind of emotions. You know, going in there as, in my first championship four, it was very, you know, exciting and happy, and uh, it flipped very quickly on Sunday morning. So it, it is, you know, a huge moment to be in the final four, and, and I hope that I'm able to execute. But... Uh, I don't ever want to relive those, you know, those, uh, the shocking news that, that, you know, got, I guess, told upon us hours before you got to go perform at your highest at the most important race of your career. Um, so that was not ideal. And uh, I look forward to re having, having that moment again and, and hopefully under d different circumstances this time. Yeah, yeah, it'll be, it'll be nice to, uh, you know, have him around and and you know last year was uh, just insane like unheard of and uh it'll definitely be a lot better this year okay we finish up with one last question in the back tim reynolds of the associated press congratulations on the win Thank you. you understand of course what the six guys who are still in the running for the two spots you know what their minds are going to be like this coming week what even though you guys Obviously, you're all trying to win every week. How does the mindset change when you're going into this this last race, knowing you need a result to have a chance to win the thing? What what changes in your mind? What will change in their minds I may this just week? Stay home next week. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, it it definitely it it's, your outlook for the race is completely different. And, and your so if the strategy presents itself an opportunity to flip the stages and get track position, you take it because you're not worried about points. Uh, it, you, yeah, I mean, if you, those guys have a lot more to race for than what I do now going into Martinsville. So um, the mentality is completely different for them than it is for me. And, and you just have to be aware of that. And, uh, you know, it, 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 being able to focus on just winning the race and not having to score points definitely has its benefits. And uh, that's where we're at. So 
uh, I think that you know we, we should be really competitive next week. Martinsville is is obviously a good track for me, and and um, I look forward to going there and, and having a week with no pressure. All right, Christopher, thanks for coming in. Good luck the rest of this season. Thank you. Don't eat that.